Welcome once again, everybody, to the Disability and Jesus Sunday service for today, the 18th of July, the seventh Sunday after Trinity and the middle of the summer. It's amazing to me, as I said last week, to think that we're halfway through the year and more. Uh, it just doesn't seem possible. But today we think about what it means to come to Jesus, what it means to find our peace in him and what it means in this world of turmoil when there's so much going on to concern us and to make us anxious, what it means to find God's shalom, God's rest, God's wholeness. And so I pray that this service today will speak to you and allow God to speak to you and that you will receive from him the love that he wants to give you today. Time to pray. Our prayers of penitence and confession with introductory words from John's Gospel, and then a prayer said together, and then words of absolution and forgiveness. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Let us therefore bring our sins into his light and confess them in penitence and faith. Father Eternal, giver of light and grace. We have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Now hear these words of absolution and forgiveness. The symbol on the screen is someone stood with their arms outstretched free now and the chains that once bound them broken. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's collect. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is from Mark 6, verses 30 to 34 and 53 to 56 from the NRSV. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognised them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land of Kinesrat, and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognised him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to whether they heard that he was. And wherever he went into the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The apostles gathered around Jesus and they told him all that they'd done and taught. And he said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. They'd been really busy. 
it had been intense. There was no break from the demands that they faced. There was no let up from the constant busyness. They were weary and they needed rest. And weariness is one of, if not the, defining characteristics of life at the moment for so many people. We are weary, aren't we, in so many ways. We're weary with the pandemic. We're weary with the restrictions, or maybe with the effort of trying to get other people to understand how important the restrictions are for the well-being of other people. We're weary from worry and anxiety about friends and family, about neighbours, about colleagues, about parishioners, about friends, about whoever it might be. We're weary from dealing with the constant are we there yet questions from people who want their freedom back. We're weary from sharing the concerns of those who just can't be safe unless other people keep the precautions going. And with that weariness comes the burden of responsibility. Responsibility for operating the Covid protocols that keep each other safe. Responsibility for our finances and futures, whether it's personally or in a parish or a business or whatever it happens to be. Responsibility for our finances and futures in very uncertain situations. Responsibility for the well-being of people who often we're not even able to meet. Responsibility for all of those business as usual things for which people seem to have little time or energy because of course only the pandemic matters. Responsibility for these and so many other things, responsibilities of all kinds and of course we mustn't forget responsibility for looking after our own well-being and sustaining ourselves. It's a weariness which is more than just tiredness. It's more than just having had a hard day. It's a weariness that comes from burdens without breaks and labour without leisure and responsibilities without respite. And of course, the disabled community knows that all too well, COVID or no COVID. And carrying that load is hard. So where do we go? Where do we go with all that? Well, we accept an invitation. What Jesus says to his apostles in the gospel today is, take a break. But we know that Jesus goes much deeper than that. Because we know that he also and famously says, come to me, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Rest. Not just a, an afternoon off, not just a little bit of respite, but rest, peace, shalom. Amidst all of the, the busyness and all of the burdens, all of the responsibilities and all of the restrictions, all of the barriers that we have to keep breaking down and the obstacles that we keep having to overcome, through all of it runs the invitation from Jesus to come to him to find peace, wholeness, rest, shalom. An invitation to live and work in his way, to find the lightness and the ease that he offers. Not just saying a prayer at the beginning of the day or the beginning of a meeting or the beginning of a project and then relying on our own strength to get us through, but remembering that we are harnessed to Jesus all the way and he will guide us in all we do if we let him. It's an invitation from Jesus to find the peace of the kingdom and to treasure it in everything that we do. It's an invitation 
to keep our eyes fixed on the goal, as the ploughman must do to plough a straight furrow, and not to let the muddiness of the moment overwhelm us or obscure the promise. It's an invitation amidst all the burdens of life that cause us to be weary, to remember that Jesus is Lord and he has the reins. It's an invitation to know that Jesus saves the world and we don't have to. It's an invitation to know that God is God and we don't have to be. It's an invitation to come close to Jesus, to rest in him, to learn from him, to receive from him, to love like him. And so amidst all the weariness and all the burdens of life, may we hear that invitation from Jesus today, come away with me, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Amen. A time of intercession and prayer, a moment to ponder and to pray for the breaking in of God's kingdom in our world today. Each short section of prayer ends with the words, your kingdom come, and then together, your will be done. A dangerous prayer asking that what Jesus intends in heaven actually is seen and lived on earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus, you taught us to trust you in all things. We hold to your word and share your plea. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus, where nations budget for war, Whilst you say, put up your sword, your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus, where powerful governments claim their policies are heaven blessed, while scripture states that you bless the powerless, your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus, where those who speak up for dignity are treated with scorn or contempt. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus, where our prayers falter, our faith weakens, our hope fades. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus, where we are broken in body, mind and spirit, and wholeness seems far from us. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus, you have declared that your kingdom is among us. Open our lives to receive you. Strengthen our hands to serve you. Give courage to our hearts to love you and our neighbor and ourselves. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For 
Why is the kingdom, kingdom the power, the power and, and the glory forever and ever? Amen. May the road rise to meet you, the rain fall soft upon your fields, the sun shine warm upon your face, and until we meet again, may God keep you safe in the hollow of his hand. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit among you and remain with you always. Amen.